San Diego, that delightful subtropical city on the shores of San Diego Bay, away down in the southwest corner of the United States. There, the California Packing Corporation, canners of Del Monte Foods, has its modern tuna canning establishment. And from there, we invite you to journey with us on the good ship navigator into the South Pacific realm of the fighting tuna. We find the navigator at her dock, a stout craft with an 8,000 mile cruising radius and cargo space for 175 tons of fish in her specially constructed refrigerated hold. She's taking on one of her most important supplies, ice, tons of ice. Into a crusher go the huge 300 pound blocks to be ground up fine and blown into the hold where refrigerating apparatus keeps it frozen. Here's the blower in action, sending down the finely crushed ice to the hold, where the tuna will be packed as fast as they're caught. Iced, fueled and provisioned for the voyage, the ship casts off, and it's full speed ahead as we point her bow for the open sea. The blue water haunts of the gamey deep sea tuna, with our course laid almost due south, for the tuna prefers the warm southern waters. We're several days out now. In the crow's nest, the lookouts are alert for the first sign of tuna. The tuna we're after will be caught with barbless hooks at the end of piano wire leaders, the lines attached to stout bamboo poles. These are the lures, squid they're called, bundles of feathers tightly bound round the hook. In the water, they look like sardines, one of Mr. Tuna's favorite dishes. They're live sardines aboard too, and we'll see how they're used when the fishing starts. Ahoy below, school of tuna off the port bow, Break off the fishing tackle and prepare for action while the ship maneuvers into place guided by seabirds circling above the school of tuna. These birds are looking for sardines, which the tuna in turn are following. A tank already? We'll be needing it soon. Out with that two-pole tackle, a pair of poles, with one line attached to them. For when we come to big tuna, it will take two men to handle them. All hands are busy now. The work is on in earnest. Fishing platforms or grates are lowered over the side. Tackle is passed out. Top side, the chummer is ready. He's the man who handles that live bait, tossing sardines into the water a few at a time, just enough to keep the tuna interested and bring them up to the squid lures. Socko, our first strike, and a big one too. Get busy there, Mr. Chummer. More of that good old come on stuff. Oh boy, oh boy, here's what we came a thousand miles to get. Nice work there, Chummer. Keep them coming. We're in a school of beauties now and action plenty of it. Talk about the poetry of motion, these tuna fishermen have it. Look out, it's a shark, the big bad wolf of the sea, a mean fighter who asks no quarter and gives none. But he won't last long with these lads. Drag him in, crack him on the head, and the fishing goes on. Goes on is right, just look at them come aboard. A flip of the pole, up he comes off the barbless hook, and back goes the pole for another cast. As fast as tuna are caught, they're started toward the hold. They'll be on ice almost before they've stopped flopping. Just for a change, let's follow them below deck and see what's happening there. Hey, what is this, a polar expedition? Just look at that ice. And refrigerating pipes all around to keep the temperature down to freezing. The fish certainly will stay fresh in this temperature. Well, back on deck. And now we've hit a run of smaller one-pole tuna. Incidentally, the finest kind of tuna for canning purposes. But even while this fishing is going on, they're icing them away, freshly caught. Hand up on deck, they're still pulling them in. Hey, here's a big one. Oh, say, it takes skill and muscle to bring in a fish that size, but our tuna fishermen have both. That big one means we must be getting back into the bigger two-pole fish, weighing 80 to 100 pounds. Okay, that calls for heavier tackle. Yep, and here it is, a two-pole outfit. Come on, you big guys. We're ready for you. As back at it again. And now watch them go. It takes real handling to pull them out that way. And never foul a line or snag a hook. You have to work with the momentum of the fish as he thrashes his way up out of the water. Make him help you. More live bait there, chummer. Keep them coming our way. It's still a two-pole run. And two-pole means teamwork. Both partners on each two-pole line have to move together or else. Ah, <laughs> they're coming too. But as fast as they accumulate, they go on down into the hold, with all hands helping, if necessary, to keep the deck clear. Down in that wintry hold, more of our crew pile the fish up neatly to save space. 
literally snowing them under with crushed ice, tier upon tier of them, right out of the water. Ah, what's this? Another run of one-pole fish? All right, that's what we're here for. There can't be too many of these small fellows. Our chummer's still at it, too, and doing well to judge by our load, and to judge by the way these fish are taking the hook. What a fisherman's paradise this is. That is, a very active fisherman. No place for a loafer, for even the smaller tuna weigh 20 to 30 pounds. Take a closer look now at the way our chummer works, watching the water and the fishing all the time, tossing in just enough sardines, just often enough to keep the tuna coming. He's really a mighty important cog in this fishing machine. It's still fast action down here on the deck, too, as our school of small tuna keeps striking. Don't let that word small confuse you. What they lack in size, they make up for in action, and in flavor, too, when they're packed. Yes, sir, these one-pole fish are the cream of the catch, and our fishermen seem to be getting plenty of the cream. Down below decks, they're still shoveling ice as our catch goes on. Of course, fishing like this may last for an hour, or possibly for only a few minutes. It depends on a lot of things. The size of the school, for one, the skill of the chummer for another. Too little or too much bait may spoil the fishing. There's another mighty important man in the crew who works behind the scenes, the navigator up on the bridge. The ship must be kept alongside the school despite ocean currents and winds. No easy trick either, but it has to be done if we hope to make a big haul. From every angle, tuna fishing is a skilled occupation and certainly no place for a slow man or a lazy one. No, sir, it's every man on his toes every minute while we're in the school, blending their flashing action into a scene of intense excitement, a scene we remember for a long time. We're nearing the end of our voyage. More fish to be iced down, of course, and a few more still to come as the crew finish clearing the deck after the final catch. But with all the ice, the temperature is carefully regulated, kept just below freezing, yet not cold enough to actually freeze the fish. Modern controlled refrigeration makes that possible. A final careful house cleaning now. Scrub her down, me hearties. She must be spick, span, and shipshape as she heads homeward. And so, farewell to our blue water fishing ground. Hold well, Phil. The navigator swings her prow northward again towards San Diego Harbor and home. It's the end of a perfect day and a perfect voyage. And so, after our long cruise, our ship makes her landfall several days later. Back into San Diego Harbor we speed, proud of our catch and happy to be getting ashore. Almost in now and losing no time. Yes, here we are. Make her fast. We've a man-sized cargo to discharge. And here's its destination. The big Del Monte cannery right on the shores of the bay. One of over a hundred modern establishments owned and operated by this big progressive western concern. Inside there is where we're headed now to see what happens to Mr. Tuna when he comes ashore. Up out of the hold come the tuna by the crateful. The ship's winch hoists them up, across the deck, and into the sluice, which carries them along to an elevator. Up they go to the scale house for weighing. Then it's slide, Kelly, slide, as they're sluiced along to the preparation tables. They're started now on their way to make a lot of tasty tuna dishes. Let's follow them. What's this, a bath? Well, sure enough, but who'd think fish would need a bath? And note this, they're starting inspections even this early in the canning process, looking them over mighty closely, too. They've got to be good to go where these tuna are going. Well, looks as though these little fish has passed okay. And where are they going now? Into the pre-cookers, the big retort ovens, which can be closed airtight. Live steam under pressure does the cooking efficiently. Even for this pre-cook, time and temperature must be just right. Thermostatic controls see to that. Time's up. The baked tuna are pulled out and moved to the preparation tables. Here the tuna is prepared for canning. Skilled operators quickly and neatly trim away more than 60% of the tuna, leaving only the choicest meat. From this remaining 40% are selected the finest delicious white loins that go into Del Monte cans. See how carefully this operator trims away all 
but the fanciest part of the loins. But speed is necessary too, so it's fill the trays with tuna, take them away, fill up more, and always at every step careful inspections. No trays leave this rack until the tuna has been passed by a Del Monte inspector. When they're okayed, the trays are put onto the cutter, a device which cuts the tuna into just the right lengths for the different sizes of cans. From the cutter, the trays are taken right to the canning tables. With a couple of deft motions, the tuna is neatly in its can. What, another inspector? Huh. I see one reason why this Del Monte tuna is so good. Care, the most watchful care every step of the way. When the filled cans are okayed, they are moved onto a conveyor belt running under cover down the center of the tables. They are carried along to the salter where a dash of salt, but an exact automatically measured dash is added. Then on they go under an oil line, where a few drops of clear, pure vegetable oil are added. Into the capper next, a gleaming metal cap is put on each can and lightly crimped in place. The final sealing process is most important to a quality pack, so Del Monte has installed this modern vacuum sealing machine, which withdraws the air and seals the cans under vacuum. A hundred cans a minute is not too fast for this ingenious device. A quick hot bath and a cold rinse remove any oil from the outside of the cans. Out of the washer, down spiral chutes and into steel baskets. Then, into the pressure retorts for the final cook. Automatic controls on these retorts too, and they're much more accurate than mere humans ever can be. Time's up. Before the retorts are open, they are filled with cold water to cool the cans and stop the cooking process quickly. Cooked to the queen's taste, the tuna is on its way to be labeled and cased for shipment. But just a minute. Even now, there's one more inspection. Samples cut from every lot that comes out of the cooker. Is it up to Del Monte quality requirements in every way? Okay, says the inspector. Ever see how they put on those familiar green and red Del Monte labels? Watch this. The cans roll over the labels and pick them up with the aid of a little glue. And so they go on into the shipping cases. This contraption isn't one of Rube Goldberg's nightmares. It's a case sealing machine. Very simple, really. If you just watch closely how the covers are opened, the glue applied, and they're finally closed and sealed. Just a little while now, and Del Monte tuna will be on its way to market. Another worthy member of the great Del Monte family of quality canned foods. Another tempting Del Monte product, ready to bring enjoyment to millions of tables and win a hearty welcome wherever grocers display it in their stores. Thank you.